everybody, I'm Beebs Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me for another video. Today, it's Tuesday. I have another bonus video for you. I thought we would chat a little bit more about Harry and Meghan. Now, if you do not know or you're new to this channel, mostly we do talk fashion. Yes, true. But I just had to pop on to chat a little bit about Harry and Meghan because what did they do after their terribly, terribly insensitive visit to New York City but take a private jet back and forth to the Caribbean? These two, who have said so much about being more eco-conscious, that's clearly empty and vapid. The hypocrisy is profound. It's crazy to me. They also went again without their kids. This is so weird. They were gone for Invictus for at least a couple of weeks, and then they were gone to New York, and now they're gone again to the Caribbean. Well, they're back now, but we're not sure because last I heard they were just in Atlanta. So did they go back to California yet or are they still in Atlanta? That adds up to being away from your kids more in the last couple months than with them. Kids like beaches too. On the trip, we got a glimpse of Harry and Meghan walking in a deserted street. So who took the picture? And then it found its way to the tabloids. I wonder how. Meghan was wearing this sort of weird dress. It reminds me of like a cobblestone, but in white. I don't love it. The silhouette of it is fine. You know, it's just a plain dress. And I mean, it's in a fitting location to wear a plain dress like that. You know, you're on a beach, you're walking through this expensive deserted town. I just don't love the dress. I don't love the texture or the pattern of the dress. You guys have been asking me about it. There's not very many good pictures of it. I don't love it, but she's wearing it on the beach and it's a supposedly candidly snapped shot without their knowledge, supposedly. So I give it a pass. The fact that they went without their kids, they're spending more time away from their kids than with. The fact that they're taking private jets when they tell everybody how much they care about the environment. There's plenty of commercial flights down to the Caribbean that they could have taken and this seven car convoy to go around the block in New York City before the summit thing. It's just ridiculous. They're doing this stuff that really just shows hypocrisy, but it also shows unrelatable vibes. Moved from reality vibe. It would be endearing. It would give them personality. It would make them seem more human to just walk the few blocks down the street. What did they think was going to happen if they would have just walked down the street? I'm so confused by this seven car convoy. Everybody walks in New York City. Why aren't they? It's weird. All that said, it led me to think about the journey I've been on with Harry and Meghan over the last several years. Because I actually didn't used to dislike Harry. I didn't particularly like Harry. He always seemed a little bit like full of himself, kind of cocky. He always seemed a little bit like that to me, but I didn't actively dislike him either. Even Meghan, I didn't dislike. I didn't even know who she was at first. So this led me to think about why and how Everybody's opinions have changed so dramatically. A complete 180 on Harry for sure. Literally going from just indifference and not knowing who she was to being like, whoa. Yet there's still some people out there who don't understand why Harry and Meghan are not liked. I used to like Harry better than I do now. I used to feel a bit bad for him. You know, he's the youngest of the family. I'm the youngest of the family. William's the heir. I could empathize with how hard that would be, the challenging position that he was in, and I was happy to see the engagement announcement. I really was. I thought, great, that's good. He's going to feel happy, have his own thing a little bit. That's going to be great, I thought. And my first impressions of Meghan Markle were like, who is she? I don't know. I thought she was like a news reporter when I saw them in this over the pond press announcement. I didn't know who she was. I never watched Suits. One of my friends said she has toothpick legs that day. And I was like, well, she can't help that. You'd be nice. So, I mean, I was defending her at first. Lots. I did notice that her outfit seemed strange. You know, I noticed right away that her shoes were too big and her jacket was really chunky. So I was confused right off the bat by her fashion choices, but just thought, well, she doesn't know anything. Maybe they'll get better. Of course her fashion's gonna get better over time. 
I was wrong. I thought her acting background would set her up perfectly for this stuff because although I don't know all the ins and outs of royal etiquette, I'm not saying that. I have been to finishing school. I do know to some degree some of these etiquette things and there are a lot of rules and it's not easy to remember. And when you're in the moment, um, you know, you get a little flustered or a little nervous sometimes. I mean, I would imagine meeting these people would be a little intimidating especially at first. I thought being an actress, it would be pretty easy for her to be able to do these things. And I remember having conversations with my friends saying that she's probably gonna be really good at this, you guys, because she's been an actress. She can remember lines. She can remember where she's supposed to be in a scene. She'll be able to remember this stuff pretty easy. I thought it was gonna be great. As she was integrated into the royal engagements and the sphere of it all, and we saw more of her, I still had some sympathy for what she was going through, despite finding her outfits super weird and questionable. She looks off in her outfits, and that is weird to us because we know she has resources and she's wearing stuff that's objectively beautiful on its own. Like the garden party dress on its own does look pretty. The, the green cape dress in a sketch does look cool. So many of her dresses and her looks look really nice on paper or on a mannequin or on a hanger. It stands out even more when you have beautiful clothing not working out on the body, not looking good on it stands out even more because something that's that expensive and that fabulous looking on its own should look even better on you. You know, like you should look spectacular in it and you just don't. A really good example of picking stuff that's not flattering for your body type and having it be like, what is she wearing? Despite it being an otherwise beautiful dress or piece of clothing. But anyway, initially in her first like year, I, I recognized that she had big shoes to fill, that she was always going to be compared to Diana and to Kate. And let's face it, anybody standing next to Kate is going to look like a hobbit. No, I'm just kidding. She's so lovely and radiates such positivity. People standing next to her look fabulous and happy to be there. But, you know, it's going to be hard for whoever Harry's wife would have been. It would have been a challenge. Also having that sort of, I guess, shadow isn't the right word for it, but of Diana's memory there always. So being compared to those situations all of the time is never going to be easy for anybody. There's a lot happening. So let's, you know, be nice. But as stories came out and as I saw like her actual behaviors and interactions and like heard her talk more and more, it was more and more red flags as time went on. And because nothing was getting better. There were no improvements over the first several years to her wardrobe. There were no improvements to the fit of her clothes or the style of clothes that she chose. There were no improvements to her etiquette or her and Harry making any effort to be like better at what they did. There was no efforts to improve those things and we simultaneously had actual stuff coming out that they were like being kind of rude. It was coming to light that she was not very kind and super awkward. And that's the other thing. I thought, well, perhaps she's just really awkward. Harry seems kind of awkward sometimes. And maybe she's super awkward and that's why they're together, you know? They are both awkward and they get each other. Even the most awkward person, if they're doing this for their job, then they're just not doing a good job if they're refusing to learn and to adapt to the demands of their role. And that's what we saw happening. And at a certain point, you can't just always defend those things. It's like, eventually you have to get with the program. The other thing that was a bit of a red flag was her wanting to change things and be so different immediately. The reason why it's weird to try to change rules from day one is because pretty much everybody recognizes that at that point, you don't know anything. You don't know how anything works. You don't know hardly anybody's name. You don't know where you're going in the palace. You're going to get lost. You don't know enough to suggest changes or to start doing things differently at that point. And that just signaled a big disrespect and disregard for this historical huge institution that she was now a part of and representing that she didn't even take the time to learn the ropes before trying to do things her own way or do things differently. And making changes and whatnot and evolving or growth those are all real positive things, but when you try to hop into it before you even know 
where you're going or what you're doing and you've never even tried it the way that they do it and you don't even understand why these rules are rules, when you're there at that point, it's not a good idea to try to change things because it makes you look like somebody who doesn't care about all the work that everyone else have done and are doing. And you're plopping in there with no intel and suggesting changes. It just doesn't make sense. It's the same with etiquette rules. If you don't yet understand why a rule is a rule when it comes to etiquette, then you may make the mistake of thinking it's a silly rule that you don't need to follow. Like, for example, Prince Harry entering rooms first. It's important because he is receiving someone on behalf of the monarchy i.e. on behalf of a part of the British government here is what we're talking about. A senator is not going to introduce his wife before him or have his wife go into a room full of other politicians before him. The President of the United States enters a room first and meets people first and then the First Lady does, unless of course they're not in the same room. This is because they are there to meet the head of state. They are there to meet the president. The wife brings value, but she's not the president. He is. Do you think Nancy Pelosi's going around having her husband be introduced and shake hands first in, in a room of other politicians? No. She goes in and shakes hands first and meets people first. Anytime the person holding the title is going to an event, relative to that title, they should be introduced first and they should go first so that they can meet the people first. It makes zero sense to do it any other way. It doesn't matter what gender these people are, it matters who has the title. So in these situations, these people are here to meet the monarchy or a representative of the monarchy, at which point that was Harry, Prince Harry. Duh, they are there to interact with the monarchy for whatever reason and often are invited to these things as an honor. It's an honor to come and meet these people who are part of the monarchy. Not that it's not an honor to meet the wife, Meghan, not that. It's just that Prince Harry was the one with the more prominent title and who also had been doing this a lot longer. He was more experienced with these things and if she would have let him guide her a little bit more, if he's even capable of guiding her, but if she would have let him guide her more, I bet this stuff wouldn't have happened as much, but she just refused to allow him to lead her. Which I wonder how frustrating that is for him. As a man, I wonder how he felt not being able to lead his wife through the first few years of her, you know, entering into this role. And I mean, I guess it was literally, they were only married and doing this for a couple of years before they quit. But I, I wonder about that sometimes, if that's part of why Harry lashed out so harshly with Spare and, and all of the, the lies and the Oprah and the Netflix, if he lashed out in part because he had some pent up frustration that he wasn't able to lead her into the life that he knew, that she was unwilling to let him lead her and guide her. And I don't think gender really has much to do with it. If it was roles reversed or even a same-sex couple. Whoever like knows the ropes of a situation, it makes sense for them to kind of lead their spouse or significant other through that process. I'm not sure. What do you guys think? The fashions, the South Africa tour, the, the interview on the South Africa tour was insane. That was a really bad impression that she gave. She could have avoided that so easily, but instead she just had to make it about herself somehow. The best thing and one of my favorite things that the royal family does is to help out these charities in a completely selfless way. And so for her to turn a moment like that into herself was like just blowing the whole thing up. Their shenanigans were just always leaving this what the heck is going on? And they just got worse. I kept noticing things were getting worse and worse and worse as it progressed, not better. It didn't make sense. So by the time they stepped down, I was like, good, go ahead, go. You guys are clearly not doing a good job. You're not trying, so get on, good riddance. And I thought at the time that if they leave quietly, 
give it a couple years, then maybe they'll come back and do a way better job. They just need time to mature and adjust and then come back and it can be fine. But they burned that bridge too through Oprah and Spare and Netflix and Archetypes. <sighs> They just showed us how horrible they really are. And each project revealed worse and worse things about them and more and more out of touchedness and just made them look less and less appealing at every turn. The book's revelations were particularly bad and really made me think, okay, there's big problems here with Harry because the whole Elizabeth Arden cream, Todger, situation. To put that in a book and think that that's okay is indicative of somebody who is grossly out of touch and self-absorbed. To not be able to see how people are going to read that as so wrong. All of that combined, you could say, well, you're just judging, but my dad was a lawyer. And judging just on admissible evidence there's been like over 50 lies at this point between Harry and Meghan, between Netflix and Oprah and Spare and countless little articles written here and there. There have been at least 50 individual lies that are proven, provable. So they are not trustworthy human beings and they are lying for what? It poses the question, what is the motivation? Is it really that they just want to tear down the monarchy and ruin it? Probably not. These seem like very self-serving individuals who are out to get some degree of uh, popularity, power, of, uh, adoration, money, success, but it's not going well. It makes me wonder, did Harry just wish for Meghan to be treated? Did he think that she would be elevated to, you know, a higher status or position? Did he promise her the world, you know? Like, did he make a lot of big promises the way, you know, it's clear that these people are both a little bit insecure to some degree. So perhaps Harry, in a moment of insecurity, made it seem like he had a lot more pull and power and, and that she was gonna have a lot more fanciful of a position and then once it all started, they realized they weren't going to be on equal footing and she wasn't going to get to have the same privileges and things were going to be a little bit more like Fergie or Sophie than equal to Kate. Perhaps he promised more than he could ultimately deliver or she was expecting something different. Perhaps they were both just jealous. I have so many questions about why these people have gone on the path that they do because it doesn't make sense. Did they not like the Commonwealth positions? The charities that they were going to visit? The people that they were meeting? Did they not like that? Did they think that they were being like given less glamorous options? I don't know. I feel like they tried really hard to find things that would be aligned with Megan's you know, realms. You know, Harry had all these like military roles and Invictus and I think that they were giving Megan, they gave Megan some stuff to do with the arts. She had a theater patronage. I think they were just trying to give Harry and Megan stuff that was relatable to them and to the public both. That they were trying to balance those things. And I'm also certain that if Megan really didn't want a specific patronage, she could have said no and they could have found something different for her, surely. So I'm just kind of confused about all of that, of what it is that made them so upset it doesn't make sense because it doesn't add up. None of it's adding up. It all just kind of reads like somebody who was caught behaving like a dick and then is trying to cover their tracks or divert. Something that narcissists do a lot, try to get angry or try to point to something else to distract from what they were doing wrong or their bad behavior. And that's what it reads like to people, that it's just this diversion of attention away from what Harry and Meghan had been doing wrong and the poor decisions that they were making and try to just make it into something else that it wasn't. And that's why none of it adds up and that's why none of it makes sense to literally any of us. Anyway, I am always befuddled by these two, but I hope you didn't mind my, my brief recap of the journey that I went on because I do tend to give people the benefit of the doubt. There's just far too many red flags with these two and bad behaviors and rude and unkind choices. It's not just disappointing, it's 
deserving of critique. Well, it has everything to do with behavior and actions and choices and words straight from their mouths and absolutely nothing to do with rumors or just how somebody looks in their outfits that are tragic. You know, I didn't even ever watch their engagement interview. I'm sure if I did now, uh, especially knowing how everything played out, it would blow my mind. Maybe that would be a fun video to make sometime, walking through that engagement video for the first time with you guys. Let me know if you're interested in that in the comments. And for now, thank you so much for being here with me. I will see you in the next video. Please click the like button if you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much again for being here with me. I will see you in the next video. Have a happy day, everybody. Bye!